Hi and welcome to my presentation on the vertical datum rule change and height limited boundary concepts. I'm Carl Wilton and I'm a cadastral surveyor and property rights at LINS. I'm also the chair of the survey and spatial cadastral stream. So with those two hats on, I will discuss two topics. The first part is dealing with compliance after the 1st of July. And the second part is more around survey practice and concepts to bear in mind when surveying height limited boundaries. Following that, I'll do a quick recap and then um, just a quick note about promoting NZVD 2016. So I'll start off with the main changes that will happen to CSDs after the 1st of July. On the 1st of July, Schedule 5 of the Cadastral Survey Rules changes so that the only official vertical datum is New Zealand Vertical Datum 2016. This does not affect existing unit title developments. Rule 62 confirms that they must remain in the original datum. Rule 18.1 isn't changing, but it does play a significant role in how CSDs must comply after July 1. It specifies that all reduced levels in a survey must be expressed in terms of a single official vertical datum. We'll come back to this in a moment. So what happens on the 1st of July? CSDs submitted from the 1st of July onwards must be in terms of NZVD 2016 except for existing unit developments. Obviously, CSDs submitted before the 1st of July can use the other official datums. And the Surveyor General has confirmed that a CSD submitted before the 1st of July, but then requisitioned and resubmitted after the 1st of July, will not be required to be converted to NZVD 2016. This is a special allowance but there are no other special dispensation allowances to use the old official datums after the 1st of July. Any dispensation request to use other datums will be assessed on the normal dispensation criteria, i.e. a dispensation request will need to demonstrate that using NZVD 2016 is clearly impractical or unreasonable. The expectation is that NZVD 2016 is used for defining height limited boundaries on all CSDs after the 1st of July. So let's come back to Rule 18. It says all reduced levels in a survey must be expressed in terms of a single official vertical datum. This means that only NZVD 2016 levels can be shown on plans and documents in the CSD. RLs from other datums cannot be shown. If a TA consent condition requires levels to be provided in another datum, then you may need to use a separate document that is not part of the CSD to satisfy those conditions. If you are in discussion with a TA about how to meet consent conditions, then please take the opportunity to suggest that they need to start using NZVD 2016, as all data sets from the 1st of July will only show NZVD 2016 levels. Now I'll quickly discuss existing height limited boundaries. We know that from the 1st of July, all reduced levels in a survey must be in terms of NZVD 2016. This means that where there are existing height limited parcels in a survey, the associated height limited boundaries will need to be updated to NZVD 2016. This should be straightforward if the underlying survey was carried out in terms of the 2021 survey rules as the CSD should include a vertical control mark, which will have an NZVD 2016 level. That makes it easy to determine an adjustment value between the datums. A check should always be made to see whether the height value on the VCM has changed since the underlying survey was carried out. I'll talk more about this in a moment. 
The method used to update the existing levels to NZVD 2016 needs to be covered off in the survey report. This is not just for the benefit of LIN staff, it's also important information for surveyors using the CSD in the future, so that they can understand how the levels in the CSD have been updated. Okay, so now I'm going to move away from compliance and put my cadastral stream hat on and start talking about survey practice. As we saw in the previous slide, existing height limited boundaries have to be updated to NZVD 2016. So that is an exercise that is likely to become more frequent following July the 1st. There will be times when this might be straightforward and times when it might not. For example, when the witness marks for the existing height limit boundaries have gone, or worse, when the existing height limited boundaries were defined using an assumed datum and the marks have gone. So I'm hoping it might be useful to discuss some aspects of working with vertical boundaries in NZVD 2016. And I'll start off with something that some of you may have counted when working with levels and something I became more aware of following the Kaikoura earthquakes. So here is an innocuous looking 3V mark, Trig Mount Albert number three. It has a height in terms of NZVD 2016 and in terms of Wellington Vertical Datum 1953. So pretty easy to convert between the two datums here. The difference is 0.34, quite similar to the difference that Rochelle showed us in the Auckland datum. So it's small enough so that it is not obvious when the wrong datum has been used but big enough to cause problems when that happens. However, there is another catch. Let's have a look at the height history for Mark A2LL by clicking on previous heights. We now get a list of the history of previous heights. Looking at that list, we can see that the NZVD 2016 value was 181.54 metres in November 2016. Then it was 181.56 metres and 181.52 metres in January 2018. And then 10 months later, 181.57. That last change is 0.05 metres. So for a Class A survey, that difference has some significance. What this illustrates is that NZVD 2016 levels get updated from time to time due to national geodetic adjustments and due to the effects of ground movement. So if we're working with an existing height limited boundary that was established before November 2018, there could be a five centimetre difference that we need to take into account. So time for a picture. So this is how I picture the NZVD 2016 datum and ground levels working. We have an existing height limited boundary and its witness marks. The height limited boundary passes through the floor slab of the building. So the relative position of that height limited boundary to the building is quite important. The dotted line at the bottom is the zero level for NZVD 2016. New Zealand is a dynamic country and the building and the survey marks and the height limited boundaries can all move up and down together with deformation. But the NZVD 2016 datum does not move up and down. It's a gravimetric datum which stays fixed in position and the land moves up and down relative to it. So the black and red lines in the diagram all move together in a block, but the blue zero line stays fixed in position. I can imagine that Rochelle is rolling her eyes at my simplistic view on this, but this is just how I picture it in my head. Following the Kaikoura earthquake, the land in Wellington moved up about five centimetres, and the levels in Wellington were adjusted to reflect the change in height of the land and the survey marks relative to the vertical datum. Hence the 0.05 metre height change to Mount Albert number three in the previous slide. So something to be aware of is that the true levels on marks and boundaries will change when wide area uniform ground movement occurs. 
What won't change is the height difference between the height limited boundary and its witness marks. So when this height limited boundary is being resurveyed, the physical relationship between the marks and the boundaries needs to stay the same, regardless of what the actual RL is. So that brings us to some height limited boundary concepts to keep in mind when working with existing height limited boundaries. The first thing to remember is that height limited boundaries are monument based boundaries. Height limited boundaries are defined and witnessed by physical monuments in the same way as horizontal boundaries. Hence the rules require two PREMs to have levels so that monuments are placed in the vicinity of the boundaries. We describe height limited boundaries with RLs, but RLs are effectively just a Z coordinate and we don't operate a coordinate canaster. Maintaining the relative location of the height limited boundary to physical monuments and structures is key. So time for another picture to illustrate this point. So here we have Mount Albert number three code A2LL and the height limited boundary surveyed in June 2018. Mount Albert has an RL of 181.52 metres and conveniently the height limited boundary was defined 10 metres above this with an RL of 191.52 metres. Now we are redefining the height limited boundary in June 2024. And we need to hold the relationship between the marks and the height limited boundary. This keeps the boundary in the same place relative to the building floor slab. The RL on Mount Albert has changed by 0.05 metres. To check it wasn't just disturbance of that mark, I've checked the values on other nearby marks and their published values also increased by approximately 0.05 metres at the same time. So keeping in mind that if the marks have risen, then the building probably has two. To reinstate the boundary, I therefore need to hold the relative heights between the monuments and the height limited boundary. This has the effect of adjusting the RL of the height limited boundary from 191.52 to 191.57, which makes sense as it reflects the fact that the building and the land and the marks have all moved up 0.05 relative to the NZVD 2016 datum. If possible, I might try to measure a floor level just to make sure I haven't mucked it all up. If we don't make the 0.05 metre adjustment to the existing height limited boundary, then we get this, a boundary that is 0.05 metres too low relative to the floor slab slightly exaggerated in my diagram. So the moral of the story here is, check that you are using the latest level value for the control marks and check their history. Ensure that you account for any and all differences between the original levels and the current levels. The height limited boundary needs to stay in the same physical position as it was originally defined. This last point leads on to my next slide, which is about definition principles and weighting of evidence. So here are some definition principles to keep in mind for re-establishing existing height limited boundaries. When all witness marks are gone, or the connection to the old work is distant or a bit sketchy, for example, where the datum origin was a manhole lid or invert level. Just remember, the ultimate intent is to re-establish the boundary in the same physical position that it was originally defined. So gather all evidence and give weight to the evidence that is least likely to be mistaken. For example, in a case where a documentary RL can only be reinstated in a tenuous manner and is in conflict with the structure, then consideration needs to be given to which evidence carries more weight. Ensure the definition decisions that you make are fully reported. Give particular attention to boundaries that pass through structures. Ensure that they are correctly defined. So that's my take on it. 
and apologies to those in Christchurch, as this is probably old hat to you, but I feel it is a good reminder to the rest of us that we have a monument-based cadaster in the vertical dimension as well as the horizontal. And that serves us well in a country where the ground moves around a little bit. So now for a recap. In terms of compliance, CSDs submitted from 1 July onwards must be in terms of the NZVD 2016, except for existing unit developments. Only NZVD 2016 levels can be shown on plans and documents in the CSD. Depiction of RLs from other datums is not permitted. A CSD submitted before the 1st of July and then requisitioned will not be required to be converted to NZVD 2016. There are no other special dispensation allowances to use the old official datums. Normal dispensation criteria apply. Existing height limited boundaries will need to be updated to NZVD 2016 upon resurvey. And some points to consider when working with height limited boundaries. Despite height limited boundaries being described by reduced levels, these boundaries are still monument based boundaries. Upon resurvey, a height limited boundary should retain the same physical relationship to its witness marks and to structures or physical features in the vicinity of the boundary. Changes to mark levels due to geodetic adjustment and disturbance need to be taken into account when re-establishing height limited boundaries. And don't be stingy with putting levels on survey marks. The more the merrier. That will leave a legacy of marks with levels to help surveyors and landowners into the future. So that's pretty much the end of my presentation. If you've got any questions, um, please feel free to send them through to this email address, cadastral at surveyspatialnz.org, and I'll endeavour to answer them. And one final word to wrap up. You're all probably aware that using more than one vertical datum in a project can create difficulties and risk. So as we are the experts in measurement, please, at every opportunity, promote the use of NZVD 2016 to all the other professionals you deal with so that we can all be working on the same datum. Thank you.